the Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Well, as we wrap up our sermon series in the book of Proverbs and we finish up with a, a sermon that actually is focused on the importance of humility in building healthy relationships, we couldn't find a better person that is more equipped, that is more gifted, and that more embodies this aspect of humility than Pastor Tyler Smith. And so for many of you who may not know Tyler, Tyler is actually our student ministries pastor. Tyler's been that in that capacity for almost coming up on two years now. And Tyler, every Sunday and all throughout the week, he is ministering to middle school students, high school students, college students, and even young adults. And that's a pretty monumental task, amen? amen. And Tyler does it with such grace and such humility. We're just so thankful for Tyler. And also, Tyler and his wife, Jordan, if you didn't know, they just welcomed their first child, a baby boy, Francis. Yes, that's right. And we know babies can teach us a lot about humility. Amen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we are so delighted because actually today is another monumental moment in Tyler's life. That is, Tyler teaches throughout the week in different capacities. He teaches on Sundays to our students. But Tyler, this today marks his first time that he'll preach a sermon on Sunday morning here in the worship center at Shoreline. So this is a monumental day for Tyler, but we know that he's up for the task because the Holy Spirit has anointed and appointed him, and you all get to be a part of this moment. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pray for Tyler, and then once I'm done, would you please join us in welcoming Tyler? Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for our brother Tyler. We thank you for this message that you've laid on his heart. We thank you for the words that he will share. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are here today. And Lord, now we open our ears, we soften our hearts, and we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us through Tyler. We pray, Jesus, in your name, amen. Would you welcome amen. Tyler? Thanks, Pastor Sean. Well, good morning. Uh, good to see you all. We've, you've all definitely heard this proverb before because it was just on the video earlier, but I'd like to read it again. Uh, it's Proverbs 16, 18, and this is what it says. It says, pride comes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And the translation that I've often heard, and perhaps you've heard it as well, is pride comes before the fall. Anybody heard that before? Pride comes before the fall. Hopefully you haven't heard that too many times, um, but I've definitely heard it before. And uh, there's this special little thing with this proverb. It always seems like you hear this proverb after the fall. Like, you know, after, you know, when your life blows up and there's something disastrous happens because of something that you said or something that you did, there's like the Jiminy Crickets in your life, right? These people who just kind of pop up out of the blue to say, well, you know how that relationship of yours fell through? You know how you said that selfish thing? You know how you didn't take that advice? Well, pride comes before the fall. And I bring this up today because I believe you picked a great day to be at church. And it's not because I'm speaking today, but because I believe that God is going to speak through his word to remind all of us that pride, in fact, does come before the fall. And my prayer, as I've been preparing for this morning, is that the Holy Spirit of God would just move in this place to encourage all of us to take steps forward in humility. Well, we've been in this series called Guideposts and Guardrails, and we've been walking through the book of Proverbs, and we've said that God gives us guideposts to point us to life. He's given us these different proverbs and these different truths in his word, not to uh, make our lives miserable, not to put a wet blanket on life, but he's given us guideposts saying, hey, if you act in this way, if you live in this manner, if you have this attitude, there's going to be life, which is what we all want. And on the same side, or on the other side, God's put up these guardrails. He's given us these different proverbs and these different truths saying, don't act in this way. Don't live in this manner to protect us. He's not doing it just to come up with rules for the sake of rules, but he does it to protect us because he loves us. 
And so today what I'd like to do is explore what Proverbs has to say about pride and humility in our relationship with God and our relationship with each other. And from my own life experience, I have found a humility in relationships uh, to cause them to flourish. I was born in the late 80s and uh, watched a lot of TV in the 90s when I was a kid. And there was this one commercial for a product called the Chia Pet. Anybody remember these commercials or know what a Chia Pet is, right? We got one on the screen here. And the commercial would come on, and it's not really the jingle, but the catchphrase would be like, Chia, 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 right? And it'd kind of catch your attention. You're like, what's the Chia Pet, right? And you dial in, and sometimes it would be a pet. Other times it might be something goofy like Homer Simpson or something. And it was just like a pottery, you know, kind of... Uh, thing there without any seeds growing on it. And on the commercial, it would show somebody pouring water on the Chia Pet. And they would pour water on it, and it'd be like, Chia, 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 right? And it would just transform. It would just be like, boom, there would be growth, right? The Chia seeds would sprout, and it seemed like it happened magically overnight. I think of humility in my relationship with others to be like water on a Chia Pet. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't happen overnight, right? You can't just do like one humble, you know, uh, thing and all of a sudden your relationships are all well and dandy. But in the same way where you pour water on a Chia Pet, over time, your relationship with God and others is going to flourish. There's going to be life. And unfortunately, I've also experienced that pride in our relationships is straight poison. Pride in our relationships is poison. If you want to make your relationship with God and others sour very quickly, all you got to do is be selfish. And the truth is, we all have to deal with pride. It doesn't matter if you're here today and you're like, I'm a follower of Jesus, you deal with pride. If you're in here today and you're like, well, you know, I'm not a Christian, but I'm kind of exploring this and interested in who God and Jesus is, you struggle with selfishness as well. I have not met a single human being or know of a single human being, excluding Jesus, who didn't struggle with pride. Pride is the absolute granddaddy of all sin. If you think about it, it was actually the pride of Adam and Eve that ushered sin into the world. Here's what author and, C, uh, and theologian C.S. Lewis said about it. He said, the vice I am talking of is pride or self-conceit. And the virtue opposite to it in Christian morals is called humility. According to Christian teachers, the essential vice, the utmost evil, is pride. On chastity, anger, greed, drunkenness, and all that are mere flea bites in comparison. It was through pride that the devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice. It is the complete anti-God state of mind. Lewis does not pull any punches when he's talking about pride. And pride turns everything into something about you. What am I getting out of it? Am I being treated fairly? What's in it for me? It's when your thoughts, your actions, your general well-being, your life override anyone else's. And honestly, prior to this message, I was like, this isn't something I really deal with that much, right? When I saw that I was going to give a message on humility, I was like, they picked the perfect person. <laughs> yeah, Sean nailed it, right? I'm so humble. I'm just going to grand slam this one, you know? And uh, so I started praying. I was like, God, where, where are arenas in my life? What aspects of me um, is there selfishness and pride? And there's some prayers that I call just like green light prayers, the kind of prayers that God just says, the green light, all, you know, go, I'm going to answer that one. And if you ask God, if you come before him in prayer and say, God, would you show me where I'm being selfish? God will just pull out the spotlight, right? He's just like right there, right there, you know, he's going to bring it to the light. So some examples. Um, not that I've ever lived through any of these at all. So you come home after a long day of work and your spouse asks you to take out the trash. And maybe you don't say it, but in your head you're thinking, oh, why don't you take out the trash, right? I want to watch some Netflix. I want to sit on the couch. Pride. Or when you're at work and a coworker 
comes to give you some constructive criticism or perhaps some advice, and you just, you just bristle, right? And just like inside you're thinking, who are you to tell me what to do? Who are you to tell me how to do my job? That's pride. Or pride is when you're reading God's word and you're reading it and you're like, man, I understand what you're saying loud and clear, God. I know what you want me to do, but no thanks. It's pride. And for some of you, maybe pride is, you know, you're going on Highway 1, you're heading out to Marina, and there's that one portion where, like, cars can kind of sneak in, right? And maybe they did it intentionally, maybe they did it unintentionally, but somebody cuts you off in traffic, and you just want to give a special gesture and just kind of slam on the horn. That's pride. And it's pretty shocking that the language that God uses to describe prideful people as I was reading through the book of Proverbs and I was going through the Bible and just read all these different verses about pride, I was like, what does God have to say about pride and prideful people? And honestly, as I read the verses, I was like, can I bring these up on Sunday morning? Like, are these okay? Because the language is strong. But being the kind of church that does not shy away from any part of the Bible, um, we're gonna look at that. So here's a couple of Proverbs. The first is Proverbs 16, 5. It says that the Lord detests all the proud of heart. Man, that's some serious language. That's strong. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. We talk about a guardrail. That is God giving us a guardrail saying, man, not only do I detest prideful people, but there will be consequences. He's given us a warning. Proverbs 3.34 says, he, God, mocks proud mockers. I was, I was honestly like surprised when I read that. You know, I just don't think of God mocking people, but it says, God mocks proud mockers, but check this out, shows favor to the humble and oppressed. And just in case you're thinking, well, that's Old Testament God, right? He's, he's different, and he uses that kind of language. There's no way that New Testament, grace-loving Jesus would use that kind of language. Here's what James wrote in his letter to the church. And just as a reminder, James was the little brother of Jesus. He saw Jesus face to face. He spent time with Jesus. He knew the character of Jesus. And most importantly, he knew that Jesus was God. And he wrote this. And he actually, it's a reference to Proverbs 3.34, which I just read. He says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. God opposes the proud, which is a spot that I nor you want to be in. And it's interesting because we live in a culture that often values and lifts up prideful people. We often love people who are full of themselves, people who claim that they don't need anyone else's help. In a culture that is very individualistic, the ultra-proud at times can seem like heroes, but God looks at people who are selfish, arrogant, full of themselves, prideful, and he scorns them. So if God opposes the proud, which is a position I don't want to be in, which is the position you don't want to be in, I think the first step for all of us is identifying pride in our lives, which is not always easy to do. Pastor Timothy Keller once said that pride is like carbon monoxide. He says it silently and slowly kills you without you even knowing it. In other words, pride is hard to spot within ourselves. So here's some ways that pride often plays out in our relationship with God. One of the ways, and maybe you wouldn't vocally say this, but the way that you're living is, I know better than you. I know better than you, God. These are those moments where you're like, oh, I understand what you want me to do, God, or I'm reading your word, and I understand it says, you know, I should forgive my enemies. But you're just like, oh, I don't know if that's the best action, it's 2019, the Bible's 2,000 some years old. Why do you have to, I, I don't know, God. I hear you, but I think I know better than you. Pride. Sometimes it's, I don't trust you. Yes, I understand, God, that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, um, you are with me. 
but today I lost my job. Or today somebody I love is really sick. I'm going through a hard time right now, God. Why is this happening to me? And in those moments, it can be hard to trust God. And if you pulled that back, you would see pride. And for some of you here uh, visiting, you might say, I'm fine without you. I don't need you, God. I've lived this long and life's been okay. It's been pretty good and I just don't think I need you, God. That's pride. But while God opposes the, the proud, it also is very clear that God rewards the humble. Listen to this verse in Proverbs 22, 4. It says, humility is the fear of the Lord. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. Man, you talk about a guidepost. Here is God saying, here is a guidepost to life. If you are humble in your relationship with me, there's going to be life, there's going to be peace, there's going to be joy, there's going to be love, there's going to be a closeness and intimacy with your creator. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is Psalm 27, 4. And it's a psalm, so it's like this song prayer of David. And he says, one thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. As Christians, like our heart is just, we want to be close to God as close as we possibly can on this side of eternity until we're with him face to face. And I want to do everything I can, and I think you want to do everything you can to draw close to him. And so God is saying, humility is the way. Being humble in your relationship with God the Father. So what are some ways that we can grow in our relationship with God? Um, I came up with three ways. I'm sure there's more, but I think these are pretty helpful. Um, The first is this. We can confess our pride towards God. Uh, Easy to say, not easy always to do. When we see pride in ourselves, our first inclination should be to confess it and say, God, I'm sorry for this selfishness, this pride. Repent from it. In fact, this is one of the foundational marks of Christianity, Jesus himself said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. Denying yourself is just the ultimate act of surrender. It is this act of humility. And so part of our just daily what it means to be a Christian is to look within ourselves, and if there's selfishness, confess it, repent it, surrender it over to God. We can grow in our humility with God by learning to trust God in the confusion and challenges of life. Which I'm not ignorant. I I know there's some of you here this morning and you're in the middle of a storm. Like it's hard. Life is just throwing everything at you and it's scary and you don't know what's next. And in this moment you're like, it's hard to trust God. And then for the rest of you, you either just came out of a difficult season or You're heading in that direction. How can we trust God when life is hard, difficult, confusing, and challenging? Two things that I've found helpful for me is remembering God's goodness in the past, like thinking back on my life and thinking about all the different, all the difficult and the hard and the challenging seasons that I went through, but see how God saw me through each and every single one of those. When we're in the middle of a storm and we remember how God saw us through the hard things of the past, we can be reminded that he's with us now and he's gonna see us through this as well. And we could also remind ourselves of who we are in Christ. If you're a follower of Jesus, he says that you are a daughter. You are a son of the king. The Bible is very clear that God loves you so much, so much that he sent his son to die for you and that he will not abandon you. The third thing we can do to grow in humility in our relationship with God is study and imitate the character of Jesus. 
Get in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and just read about who Jesus was. Day in and day out, Jesus was on his knees praying to God the Father saying, what do you want me to do today, Lord? Father, who do you want me to talk to? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? Jesus was humble. In fact, Philippians 2, 5 through 8 says, Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus is a master class in what it looks like to be humble towards God the Father. Read read those narratives and see how he did it and imitate it in your life. While pride and humility influence our relationship with God, they also have an impact on our relationships with each other. Listen to this guardrail in Proverbs It's Proverbs 13.10, and it says, where there is strife, there is pride. Where there is strife, where there is drama, where there is conflict, there is often pride. About seven years ago, I started serving here at the church, and I started helping out within the high school ministry with teenagers, and I quickly realized that in high school, there's a lot of drama, right? It's just like... You know, he said this about her, and she said this about him, and did you hear what happened to so-and-so last weekend? And there's gossip and rumor, and I was like, what did I get myself into, right? And I'm a volunteer leader, and I'm like, okay, you know, I got to help these kids, and so I would just kind of wade into the mix sometimes, and I'd try to act as a mediator and try to sparse things out and bring, bring some reconciliation. And time and time again, as I heard the different arguments and the drama, and the conflict, I was like, teenagers are so selfish, right? And all all the parents of teenagers in here are like, amen, amen, right? And they're just like, man, so prideful. So I did that in my early 20s, and I went from being a young adult to an adult, and instead I spent more time with adults and was an adult myself. I quickly realized that pride and selfishness are not limited to high school teenagers, but it is a human problem. Unfortunately, high school drama does not go away after high school. Pride is a human problem. If you want a quick way to end your marriage, be prideful. If you're looking to have drama in your friendships, be selfish. If you want to increase the conflict with your children, Man, just be a little bit more prideful. But while I don't think I need to give like a persuasive argument about, you know, why pride is detrimental to our relationships with one another, I think most of us have experienced that in our friendships, in our family. We've seen how pride and selfishness can fracture and break up relationships. I also know that no one dreams about having their marriage hit the rocks. Like, nobody wants to have drama and conflict in their friend group. Like, I just haven't met that person who's like, I can't wait to hang out with my friends, and we're going to get in a big fight. I'm going to be so selfish, right? Like, nobody wants that, right? Like, we all long for, what we want for all of our relationships is health. We want to see them flourish, right? Hopefully like the Chia Pet, not with green hair, but life, growth. You get the point. So... What are some ways that we can grow in humility in our relationship with each other? Uh, Three different things. I think the first thing we can do is we can be quick to say, I'm sorry. In those moments where we do something selfish or we do something prideful, it's going to be very tempting just to kind of sweep that under the rug and just ignore it. But that would be the worst for that relationship. Just last week, I came home, and um, my wife said something to me, and I was just, I just kind of fired back a comment that was rude, it was dismissive, it was super sarcastic, and like the minute I said it, I was like, oh man, like, why did I say that? And the pride in me was just like, just keep walking, right? Just kind of get, get out of the room, hopefully she'll forget, right? It'll all be good. 
But the Holy Spirit of God's like, this, that's not the right thing to do. And fortunately, I had the strength to go back in there, swallow my pride, and just apologize. If you want to see health in your relationships, we should be quick to say, I'm sorry. Two, we should be open to advice. That verse I read earlier, Proverbs 13, 10, starts by saying, where there is strife, there is pride. But the second half says, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Man, you talk about a guidepost. This is God saying, wisdom is found in those who take advice. I said at the beginning that uh, a lot of times it would be really nice to hear that pride comes before the fall, before the fall. And it always seems like you hear that advice afterwards. But what I've found to be true is a lot of times when somebody's on a path and acting in a certain way, there's often people who care about them, who love them, who actually will come up to them and let them know that and say, hey, you're acting in a wrong way. Like your, your pride comes before the fall. I'm, I'm letting you know. And oftentimes prideful people just want to put their hands over their ears and say, I'm not going to listen to that. I don't want to hear it. But God says in his word, wisdom is found in those who take advice. Humble people are open to advice from others. And then third, is if we want to grow in humility in our relationship with others, we should study and imitate the character of Jesus. My wife wants to get uh, better at cooking. She's already a great cook, but she wants to be an amazing cook. And so she's watching YouTube videos of different people. She's watching the Great British Bake Off, like getting ideas. You know, she's watching the best of the best do her thing so she can be better at it. If you want to get good at sports, right, you watch sports, you watch the plays, you watch the best of the best so you can get better at it. If we want to be great at being humble in our relationship with others, we should fix our eyes on Jesus who nailed it. Jesus came down to this earth and he could have just been like, I am God Almighty. Bring me grapes, give me a back rub, right, give me a cold drink and carry me around. But Jesus wasn't that way. Jesus was humble. He served. Jesus listened. He cared for. He healed. Jesus was humble in his relationship with others. I want to land my message with an encouragement for those of you who are in here today and you're just thinking about a relationship of yours that has just been fractured, that has been broken by pride. You're thinking about that relationship and you're like, man, things used to be so good and it was healthy, but you said something or you did something and it's just not the same. And your heart wants to get it back to a place of health. I want to encourage you by telling you that there is hope. There is absolutely hope. I have seen our God transform selfish prideful people into people who are selfless. I have seen marriages and friendships and relationships with family members and co-workers find restoration and healing. And what it takes is one person to lay down their pride, ask God for strength and a change of heart, and to take steps forward in humility. And if you're thinking about that relationship, it can be really, really easy to think about the other person and be like, well, that person is the selfish one and they did something and they said something and they need to change. But if you want to see reconciliation, if you want to see health in that relationship, the first step starts with you. What is one action you can take to grow in humility and remove pride from your life. God can absolutely restore and heal relationships ruined by pride. And we can see our relationship with God and our relationship with others flourish if we follow the guideposts and abide by the guardrails that God has given us regarding humility and pride. Let's pray. Father, I'm just so grateful for the example of you and Jesus, Lord. That as we read about and think about and dwell on who you are, that you were humble. You were humble towards God the Father. You were humble towards others. 
And I pray for all of us in this room, knowing that we wanna have healthy, flourishing relationships. It's what our hearts long for. We wanna have a good relationship with you and others. And so I just pray that you would show us the areas of our life where we're being selfish. Would you, you would show us the areas where we're being prideful and you give us the strength to pull that out, to repent from it and take steps forward in humility. We love you, Jesus. We give you the rest of this day. In your name, amen. Amen. Can we thank Tyler this morning? Thanks, Tyler. God bless you.